See, oh, trigger stuck again. This is what it does to you. So it's sticking again. Okay, go ahead. I'm gonna start putting rollers in here. Um, probably gonna go have to get the wire brush and wire brush these out good first. Um, get this off of here. <laughs> so it goes single, double, single, double single double 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 barney rubble so i can go get the wire wheel and clean it up hello get some help man I ain't gonna do this all like this no way So, first problem of the day. All these snap rings. I've never seen them use snap rings before. It's usually just a wire clip ring. All right, so I think I got that dude excited. He's in Hawaii still. <laughs> he said, I'm calling the manufacturer now. <laughs> so, <laughs> probably ruined his vacation. So what I have to do is I have to get them in here and then put a bar in here. And you see these are these are a duocone, so they're under compression. So they'll move over a little. So you have to pry it over and then move the snap ring because if you try that outside, this is liable to come off or you're gonna get possibly get dirt. Something under the seal rings in there if they come out too far. I don't think they'd warranty that. The old cat rollers and all the rollers I've ever seen use a snap ring. Let me see if I can, there's one. So they put a round one in. And so it doesn't matter where that sits because it doesn't have ears on it like those snap rings there. Anyway, I just turned it up here. They serve no purpose once the roller's in and bolted down, and then this is secure. These are basically just to hold it together during shipping and installation or removal. If you gotta remove them for some reason, put them back. So anyway, what I need to do is let them down and 
and even make sure that snap ring is going to fit down in there because if that don't fit in there yeah we got bigger problems so i'm going to let it down and see what happens nope not gonna work got a huge gap there and it's down against it there's no way no way that's gonna work nope 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 so that one's sticking up nine miles huh wonder how they expected that to work huh well I'll send him another picture I'll get his blood boiling okay we interrupt this reg regularly scheduled broadcast um, so the guy I'm talking to he, I mean he wants to make sure I get helped and everything's okay So I got the dozer blade flipped and I used that thing to get those two three quarter bolts out but it wouldn't do it until I heated them up cherry red and let them cool down so I got to get these holes bored and that one and that one and this one and probably these down here. So anyway, uh, I have not got an answer yet on my roller dilemma and the snap rings. Uh, I did, however, today get a response that said, go ahead and cut these off. And then it'll probably fit down in there. So I guess I'll just get skinny wheel and buzz those off. But first, I gotta rotate them to the bottom before I do that. So, I'm gonna try that on one. I told him to try one and see if it works. And then uh, <clears throat> put them in, if that, that'll fix it. So, what I did is I removed the uh, snap ring out of one of these, and this is what they are. So they're not elliptical like these are. See how they're they're very thick up here, but they're pretty dang thick down here. They shouldn't be like that. They should be like that. But I will say this guy is bending over backwards to help me out. Alright, so the manufacturer gave me okay to do this so I had to grind the ears off and then I have to grind all the way here because these snap rings are elliptical they're thicker they're thin up here but then they get thicker and just grinding the um, eyes off the snap ring isn't enough they catch up in here it's like I got to take a little bit more off of that one and then let's see if we can get it set in there and make it fit. Okay, that's gonna work. Let me show you. So you gotta grind them clear up to there. And it's got a gap under it, but when you bolt it down, that'll come out.
Okay, one of the things you got to do is make sure these are the inside, plugs are to the outside. You got to rotate them around. So the plan. Like that. Wham, bam. Do this. Do this and do this. What the hell? go one more to go one more double so when you put rollers in they go single double single double single double double don't ever put a double back there because the sprocket won't fit between that and that sprocket is going to run right in here so you got to have a single in on the back end. One more. So these bolts, has, they've been in that track frame for 26 years. And you can still see the silver anises on them. That's good stuff. So that one, I don't know what's going on. That one's going junk, we'll get a new one. So I'm going to start putting the bolts in the rollers. I've got some time today, kind of between things. So I got my, it's really windy again today, but I got my uh, DJI mic on. So I hope that's not too windy. So what I do as I go get a can of this silver anises, messy stuff, but best stuff in the whole wide world for keeping these bolts from being stuck in there. And I slather them up good, poke it down in the hole even, smear some in there. I'll probably use the whole can before I'm done. You can't over anti-seize, promise you, you can't do it. No way, ain't possible. <laughs> I'm gonna get out the Ingersoll, tighten them up. And we're gonna get out the Hobo Freight and see how much more it turns them. I should just cut the top off and dip the bolts in the canister. Probably save me a whole bunch of time. Just do that to them, huh? What do you think? So I really got a lot of shit over my Ingersoll Electric versus Hobo Freight versus the Ingersoll Air. Of course, that video's done quite well for a short. If about 52,000 views on it. And when you get you start to get uh, that many views 
it brings out the uh, know-it-alls, people who don't like your comparison. For some reason, they're triggered over it. A lot of guys said that I didn't have the gun set on high. Well, there's only one reverse setting and that's high. There's not a low reverse. There's three forward torque settings, but there's only one reverse because generally reverse is always maximum torque. Because when do you want less than due torque on a big one inch? I guess unless you were t trying to tighten left-handed threads, but I suppose on truck wheels that would be the case. But since everybody's gone to those stupid clamp nuts, nobody uses bud wheels. And bud wheels have right-hand threads on the right side and left-hand threads on the left side. So your wheels don't fall off, come loose. Anyway, what else did people bitch about? Oh, they said there's no comparison, air against electric, and it was stupid. And what did I expect? And as old as I am, I should have known better. Well, I bought the damn thing based on what they claimed. And they claimed 2,600 foot-pounds of undue torque. Well, that's, that's incredibly way more than what any air gun I've ever owned puts out. And then on uh, Facebook, here's a Rand ad. And there was a guy that made a comment on there. And I'll... Uh, Put it in here. Bill Winnaker said he was one of the engineers on on the on the team that engineered that, and he was super proud of that beast. And so I sent him the video of of that wrench going round and around up on here, and. Uh, Anyway, you'll see it for yourself. He had all kinds of excuses. Said I didn't stand a chance getting that undone like that, standing on a lot or uh, with that up in the air that high because I couldn't handle the reaction forces of the gun. Well, I didn't. I had no problem holding the gun. It was the damn trigger that was sticking. So, anyway, he said, we love, we love seeing our products being used by our customers or videos of our products being used. And it's like, really? I would think you'd be going, hey, send that gun back. There's something wrong with it. So the other comment I got a lot about was that there's no comparison because the air has more power. Well, torque is torque. And so if Ingersoll claims that it makes 2,600 foot-pounds of torque and uh, the old Hobo Freight advertises 2,500, now, give it that I, I did have quite a bit of air. Had 200 PSI to start with on the Hobo Freight. When I got done, or somewhere in between, it was down to 150. But she was still pulling them out like nothing. I got doing some research. People kept sending me uh, videos, well, links to that Torque Test channel on YouTube and they were testing that gun 
but their machine they didn't have it set up so that they could check the undo torque they didn't have a left hand threaded nut and then everything i went looking elsewhere and come to find out manufacturers don't have a standardized standardized test for undo torque so they use some kind of electronic deal on the extension or whatever that I don't know measures the impulses and they they come up with a torque number based on that and it's varied and it's probably flawed so if you're going to tell me your gun makes 2,600 foot-pounds of torque and the old hobo freight will kick its ass easily, then something's wrong. But the other interesting thing is that hobo freight is rated up to 200 PSI of air. And the other manufacturers rate them at like 90, 110 so I got looking and Vivor makes an impact identical. Looks just like the Hobo Freight. Anyway, they make one that puts out 5,000 foot-pounds of torque, they say. Undo torque. And the interesting thing is, is all of their guns, oh, that 5,000 foot-pound one weighs 45 pounds. It's a, it's a monster, absolute monster. And then their other one, oh, and they're not much money. I mean, we're, t we're talking like $179 on Amazon for the one that Vivers one inch that they claim makes like 3,000 foot pounds of undue torque. It's insane. And they rate that one for uh, 200 PSI also. All their guns are rated for 200. Now, does that give it more power? Possibly. More than likely it does. Uh, so what's wrong with my Ingersoll? It could be a battery issue because I saw on that torque test channel that they changed the battery in one of their electric guns. It wasn't at one inch. I think it was a half or three quarter, something like that. They changed the battery to a different battery and the torque curve went whoo, through the roof. And so it may be that the battery just doesn't have it. But my test was a real world test and that's that's what you're interested in. If it makes 2,600 foot-pounds of undue torque, why wouldn't it undo these bolts? Especially considering they were put in 26 years ago, but they were still covered in silver anises. I put them in with that old Ingersoll uh, Air 1-inch I got. Some guy said that accused me of I had it on Titan, and then I had my big head in the way so he couldn't see it. And 10 seconds into the video, you can see the switch is turned to reverse, full reverse. I didn't edit any of that. I just wanted to show you what it would and wouldn't do. I'm disappointed in its performance, definitely. I'll keep it. I mean, it'll work good for other things that we're doing and it's handy because you just pick it up you don't have to get out of air hose or any of that stuff i don't know like i said is it was just a real world test and that's the best test in the world you can, i mean the torque test channel can do all that forward testing but until they can do a reverse test it doesn't mean squat and then a lot of the videos, you see them taking truck wheels off. Well, big deal. Truck wheels are not hard to get off. I mean, your, your inner nuts are just a, what are they, a 5 eighths stud is all they are? 
So we're not we're not talking monster torque necessary to get them off. All right, so what I plan on doing when I get the other track frame off and get it over here and get ready to take the bolts out, I'm gonna dedicate one side to nothing but the electric and the other side to the hobo freight. And I'm gonna beat on those sons of bucks with that electric till they either come loose or we run the battery down. And then we'll have a true world test. I'm gonna screw these in, tighten them down with the electric inger saw, one inch, and then I got a paint marker in my pocket. We're gonna mark the tops of the bolt, and then I'm going to get out the hobo freight and see how much more it tightens them. All right, if you can see the dial, I'm gonna turn it all the way over. That's full power, Rudolph. Jeez, I gotta go get different gloves or something. Yeah, I've got silver anesthesia everywhere. Let's start zipping them down. Zippity doo da. Trigger not sticking today. Just gonna buzz them all down lightly. See, oh, trigger stuck again. This is what it does to you. So it's sticking again. Stupid thing. Oh, groovy. Where'd that go now? Son of a gun. That ain't good, Jeff. Well, my remote mic just flipped off, and I gotta find that. Okay, here we go. It's on uh, full power. Full power. Okay, question is, are they tight? How tight are they? I think they're pretty damn tight. Pretty damn tight. Anyway, we'll get out the Hobie Freight and see what it does. All right, so I got the Hobo Freight out. I got 150 pounds of air. 
in the tank. Let's mark these all the same. What do you think? How far do you think it's going to turn them farther? Kobo Freight has three settings forward, three reverse. So I got it on three. So let's see what happens. Whoa, blew my hat off. Turned it a little. Okay, so it's turned it turned that one quite a bit. Turned it from the noon. This is about one o'clock, that's two o'clock, one o'clock one o'clock so it is turning it a little bit but we only got 150 pounds air so how much difference does that make I'm surprised the compressor hasn't turned on yet maybe we better go pretty sure it turned it if you let it keep pounding it actually turns it quite a bit So I will hand it to the battery powered one for getting them pretty tight, but uh, Hobo Freight still tighten them more, except for this one didn't turn, that one didn't turn, that one a little bit, didn't turn that one. So let's go see what we got for air. Yeah, we're way down, so we're going to have to let the air build up. Okay, we got uh, 200 PSI air. Let's see what it does now. Oh yeah, that tightens up. tightened significantly more others not so much so turned that quite a bit and that one that one that one that one that one it didn't budge don't know why all of these it turned them quite a bit except for that one but it did turn them I didn't pound on them a lot because they don't need to be that tight, but 200 PSI air at that gun makes a significant difference, but the Ingersoll did get them pretty damn tight. I got to hand it to the Ingersoll, it does tighten. All right. so. Uh, it's time to get the well I can't so here's the problem 
There's no threads in that hole. There's some in that one. That one. So I got one on one side that's no threads and I've got let's see no threads in that one no threads in that one that one so I've got four holes I'm gonna have to drill and tap to inch and an eighth bolt or no excuse me these are yeah these are inch bolts so we're gonna have to go to inch and an eighth and I'm not sure if I'll have room for the head of an inch and an eighth bolt to get a socket in there. Not sure at all. <sighs> so, might have to be doing a, possibly some in repair inserts or something. So now I gotta figure out how to fix that. Okay, so I've got the rollers all in and as far as my problem with the bolt holes, what I've done is I ordered five uh, 27 by 3 by 80 millimeter metric bolts, which take a 41 millimeter socket <coughs> and I ordered a tap and a 24, I think it was, I think it's 24 millimeter drill. Anyway, I'm just going to try to take the tap and go down the bad holes and see if it'll tap out at the size it is. See if the bolt goes in there and make sure I can get a 41 mil socket down through the guard where it sits. That's how I'm going to fix that. If that doesn't work, then we're either going to weld them up or put those keen certs in. And I had a guy comment, and he does this all the time. For the cat dealer they work at, they weld them up. And I asked him, how do you do that without having hard spots? He said, you drill it out past the threads, and you've got to preheat this to 250. Um, so if i got to weld it and preheat this, I may, I may be taking these rollers out to stop them from sucking up the heat or getting heat in here to damage them. But he said if you preheat it to 250, and then weld it, that will stop your weld from pulling all the carbon out of the steel in here you're welding to and causing those hard spots, because that's kind of a big deal. I remember, I always wondered why I got hard spots when I did that. So that's how we're gonna fix that. So as far as the snap ring deal goes, so, uh, I didn't have to grind as much as I did, and it wasn't a big deal. I mean, it took like 45 seconds to grind each one of these down to fit, and I got overly aggressive, <laughs> but it didn't really matter. Like I say, these just hold these collars on until they're installed, so there was plenty of O-ring up here. I could have just ground them practically flush, which is what I did. But anyway, I didn't, I didn't want to take it in and out and in and out, so I just went after it. I mean, take a little grinding wheel, and 45 seconds, they're gone. So that, that wasn't a big deal. Now, uh, the guy that owns uh, DCM Parts is Cody McCollum. And Cody bent over backwards to help me. And... I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. It wasn't a big deal. I kind of knew what I'd have to do to make this work, but Cody had to get okay from the manufacturer representative to do this. Otherwise, you could void the warranty. And the first time I called him and sent him a picture of my problem, well, he was on vacation in Hawaii. <laughs> so... I apologized for bumming him out on his vacation, which he didn't care anyway. I said, hey, send me a picture of where you're at. And he was on the beach. That was awesome. So Cody's an awesome guy to work with. He'll bend over backwards to make sure that you get the support you need when you buy products from him. 
and he's the owner of the business and here's his number and a picture of the beach in Hawaii. Anyway, you just call that number direct and you'll get a hold of him. And the reason I went with Cody was uh, he gave me such a better price than anyone else, I couldn't pass it up. And DCF makes these parts. It's a huge company. I did my research on them, so I'm not really worried about the quality. Now, they, they did kind of mess up on the snap ring thing, but I'm sure Cody's going to send them this video so they can see it. <laughs> and they'll probably rectify that problem. So if, if you need undercarriage parts, cutting edges, all kinds of stuff like that, here's a link to Cody's website. And here's his phone number and, again, a picture of the Hawaiian peach. The dude will even take care of you while he's on vacation. And you just don't find people like that anymore. So, Cody, I really appreciate it. It wasn't, it wasn't that big a deal. He just had to get approval from the manufacturer. And then I went to town and did it. So, anyway, like I say, I just got to figure out my bolt repair, thread repair options, and then we're good to go. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Right, Mr. Griff? Are we going to go in the house and finish your video? Are we? He says, yeah, Jeff, let's go. He's like a homemade loaf of bread with legs.